Hi guys, this is O Level Chemistry, paper 11, June 2022, question 21. Which statement is correct? An enzyme is a biological catalyst, yes, that decreases the activation energy of a reaction. That is the purpose of a catalyst. So this statement is correct. B, an enzyme is a biological catalyst, yes. That increases the activation energy. Then what is the use of an enzyme if it is increasing the activation energy? C, an enzyme is a compound of a transition element. No, that decreases the activation energy. Itself, enzyme does decrease the activation energy. D, an enzyme is a compound of a transition element. No, that increases the activation energy. Catalysts are not supposed to increase. They are supposed to decrease the activation energy. So this makes option A the correct option for this question. Question 22. Nitrogen dioxide is a dark brown gas that decomposes as shown in the equation and it turns into NO which is colorless. Okay. The diagram shows a glass flask containing a mixture of three gases. The mixture is pale brown. Okay. Because we've got dark brown and colorless gases mixed together. So the color is actually diffused. More oxygen is forced into the flask. Okay, we are increasing oxygen. So if we increase the oxygen, what happens to the equilibrium? Concentration of the products is increased. The equilibrium will be favored in the backward direction. So the colorless gas would be decreased and the dark brown gas would be increased. Which color change is seen in the mixture? It becomes darker brown, yes, because the backward reaction is favored. It becomes paler brown. That means the forward reaction must be favored. So that is not happening. It turns colorless. Again, all of the NO2 is converted into NO. That does not happen when an equilibrium reaction is occurring. Reactants and products are both present at equilibrium. So no, there is no change. Definitely there is a change. The equilibrium is moving backward. So this makes option A the correct option for this question. Question 23. Concentrated hydrochloric acid is oxidized by manganese 4 oxide, MnO2. What are the two products of this reaction? So, concentrated hydrochloric acid is oxidized. So, the two products would be, first of all, manganese 4 ions are reacting. So, they will be converted into manganese 2 ions because Mn4 positive will accept two electrons to produce Mn2 positive. And why is this happening? This is happening because in HCl, chloride ions are present. So the chloride ions will be giving off two electrons and being converted into chlorine gas. So the two electrons given off in reaction one will be accepted in reaction two. So what are the two products of this reaction? Mn2 positive? Yes. Chloride ions? No. Next, Mn2 positive? Yes. Cl2 gas? Yes. Next, Mn6 plus, no, Cl negative, no. Next, Mn6 positive, no, Cl2, yes. So only option B has both the correct products present, making option B the correct option for this question. Question 24. The table gives some information about four redox reactions. Which row gives correct information about what is oxidized and the evidence that this is oxidation. Okay. Uh, A. Copper oxide reacts with carbon producing carbon dioxide and copper metal. So which, yeah, rather what is oxidized in the reaction? This says copper. So copper in copper oxide had an oxidation number of plus 2. And in copper metal, it goes to 0. So plus 2 to 0 is reduction. So option A is incorrect. Option B. Na solid plus half Cl2 gives NaCl solid and they say sodium is oxidized. So sodium on the reactant side has a charge of 0 and in NaCl has a charge of plus 1. 0 to plus 1 is oxidation. So this part is correct. Let's see what evidence of oxidation they are saying. Sodium has lost an electron. This is correct. So option B is correct. Option C. N2 gas plus 3 H2 gas gives 2 NH3 gas. And nitrogen is oxidized. So in N2, nitrogen has a charge of 0. And in NH3, nitrogen has a charge of negative 3. 
going from 0 to negative 3 is reduction. So nitrogen is not oxidized. Nitrogen has been reduced. So option C becomes incorrect. Option D, zinc nitrate plus magnesium gives magnesium nitrate plus zinc. And it says zinc has been oxidized. So in zinc nitrate, zinc has a charge of plus 2. And as zinc metal, it has a charge of 0. Going from plus 2 to 0 is once again reduction. So zinc is not oxidized. Zinc is reduced. This makes option B the correct option for this question. Question 25. Which statement about acids and bases is correct? All strong acids react with carbonates, but all weak acids do not. No. Reacting with carbonate is a property of acid. All types of acid will react with carbonates. B. The oxides of group 1 metals are amphoteric. The group 1 metals include lithium, sodium, potassium. They form strong bases. So they are not amphoteric. They are basic in nature. C. The pH of 1 mole per dm cube ethanoic acid is higher than the pH of 1 mole per dm cube sulfuric acid. Uh, pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration. In sulfuric acid, there are 2 moles of H positive ions per mole of uh, sulfuric acid, whereas CH3CWH is ethanoic acid, which is a weak acid, and a weak acid is only partially dissociated. So the concentration of H positive ions in its solution will be lesser. And if the concentration of H positive ion in a solution of an acid is lesser, its pH would be higher. And that is what this question, or rather this statement of this question uh, states. So this is correct. D, the pH of 1 mole per dm cube nitric acid is lower than the pH of 1 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid. Both are strong acids. Both contain one H positive ion per molecule. And strong acids are completely dissociated. So this shows that the pH of 1 mole per dm cube nitric acid and the pH of 1 mole per dm cube Hydrochloric acid should be the same, making this option incorrect. As a result, option C is the correct option for this question. Question 26. Some types of react chemical reactions are listed. One, acid base, two, combustion, and three, redox. Which types of reactions occur in a blast furnace during the extraction of iron? So, we have an acid base reaction taking place when calcium carbonate reacts with the acidic SiO2 and this forms CaSiO3. So an acid-based reaction is taking place in the blast furnace. Next is combustion. So coke is present. Carbon, this burns in oxygen to form CO2. So this is oxidation of carbon. So this is also taking place in the blast furnace and a redox reaction. We have hematite which is Fe2O3. This reacts with carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is converted into carbon dioxide. It undergoes oxidation. Whereas iron in hematite is reduced to iron metal. So carbon monoxide is oxidized and Fe2O3 is reduced, making this a redox reaction. So all three types of reactions are taking place in the blast furnace, making option A the correct option for this question. Question 27. Which method should be used to make a pure sample of potassium chloride? Now, uh, the salt we need to form is potassium chloride, which contains the potassium ion. And all salts of potassium are soluble. So we cannot have a technique in which a, uh, an insoluble salt reacts with an acid. So what we should be doing here is titrating. So let's look at the options given. Adding AgCl to KNO3, yes, this is an insoluble salt added to a soluble salt. No, no, this will not be occurring here. Adding excess K2CO3 to HCl. So, reaction of carbonate and carbonate is a solid. No, this is not how we will produce KCl. Next, mixing KNO3 with NaCl. These are two neutral salts. They will not even react with each other. D. Titrating KOH with HCl, yes, because KOH will react with HCl in a neutralization reaction forming KCl and H2O. So this makes option D the correct 
option for this question. Question 28. A pure sample of lead sulfate is made by reacting aqueous solutions of two salts. Okay, we are making lead sulfate, which is an insoluble salt. So we will mix a soluble salt with an acid if you have to prepare that. Let's see what the question is asking. The lead sulfate formed is then separated from the mixture. Okay, which solution uh, and method of separation are used? Okay, salt solution one. It should be an insoluble. Uh, it should be a soluble salt because lead sulfate is insoluble. So, uh, lead chloride is only soluble in hot water. So, no. And lead nitrate is soluble because all nitrates are soluble. So, options A and B have been eliminated. C and D remain. Next, salt solution two. So, in order to form lead sulfate, we would need another soluble salt. So, potassium sulfate is present in both options. So, potassium sulfate will be used and in order to remove lead sulfate from the solution, lead sulfate would be a solid form. A solid form can be removed by filtration. Crystallization is not the technique for removing a solid. Crystallization is a technique for obtaining solid crystals of a soluble salt. So this makes option D the correct option for this question. Question 29, which statement is correct? Food can be preserved by using sulfur dioxide. Yes, sulfur dioxide is a food preservative, is used as a food preservative. In the contact process, oxygen reacts with sulfur to make sulfur trioxide. No, it reacts with sulfur to make sulfur dioxide. C, sulfur dioxide is used to kill bacteria present in wood pulp. That would be chlorine. Sulfuric acid is used as a bleach. This is sulfur dioxide. Or chlorine is also HClO, hydro hydrogen chloride one. So it is not sulfuric acid. So options B, C, and D are incorrect, making option A the correct option for this question. Question 30. Element Y is in period three of the periodic table. It forms a chloride that is a liquid at room temperature. Which row shows correct information about the group number and the nature of the oxide of element Y? Okay, so we are talking about elements of period three. So those are sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon. This is period three and they're talking about formation of chloride. So chlorine and argon have been eliminated because chlorine will not react with itself and argon does not react. So we left with six elements. Now, uh, which row shows the correct information about the group number and the nature of the oxide? So the oxide formed is Na2O, MgO, Al2O3, SiO2, P4O6, P4O10. Two possible oxides. SO2, SO3. Two possible oxides. Okay. So... It forms a chloride that is a liquid at room temperature. Its chloride is a liquid. Okay, so we're talking about chlorides as well, other than the oxide. So NaCl, MgCl2, AlCl3, SiCl4, PCl3, SCl2, S2Cl2. These are the chlorides of these elements. Now, it forms a chloride that is a liquid at room temperature. NaCl is not, MgCl2 is not, AlCl3 is not, SiCl4 is a liquid. This is a liquid. PCl3 is a liquid. So these three are liquid. So we have narrowed it down to silicon, phosphorus, and 
sulfur so same thing with the oxide now which row shows correct information about the group number and the nature of the oxide of element y so if it is a uh, liquid so we have this is one two three this is group four group five and group six so in the group numbers we have one no two no four yes and six yes so options a and b have been eliminated and option c and d remain so c is group four and d is group six so now we are left with silicon and sulfur so sio2 is acidic oxide and so2 and so3 are also acidic on oxide none of them are amphoteric the only amphoteric oxide present out of these is al2o3 which is not even considered here so whether it is silicon dioxide or sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide all three of them are acidic none of them is amphoteric this makes option d the correct option for this question